What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So um, this week we're going to check out a new extension from Medik Design that allows you to add electrical items into your SketchUp models. Um, so this was another extension that was voted on by my supporters on Patreon, so thank you guys very much for that. I apologize. I am a few days behind on this, but I wanted to go ahead and get this video out. Um, so one of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, maybe you're interested in supporting the show, make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I'm going to start off with a preface to this video. The preface is I don't do a lot of modeling of electrical type objects. I don't do, um, I haven't really done any creation of electrical plans. So my terminology on a lot of this may not be correct, but I still wanted to give you kind of an overview of what this extension is capable of. Because I think this has been kind of a hole in SketchUp's functionality from a plan creation creation standpoint. So to start off, you can download this extension from the Medik Design website, and I will link to this in the notes down below. And uh, when you go to that website, you're going to be able to see exactly what you can do with this extension, um, as well as um, Nathaniel's really good about noting the things that he's working on. Um, he usually has a forum on, I think, the SketchUp forums as well, where he talks about what he's adding. But um, so you can kind of see what's available, and then you can also see scroll down and if you scroll down about halfway down the page you can download the extension and so this extension has a $35 one-time fee in order to get access to it and when you do that that gives you a two-year license period to download updates to this extension and um, if you decide after that that you want to continue getting updates you can renew that for $10 a year you do not have to do that to continue using the extension once you've purchased the extension it is your extension so like he says here, the only reason to renew is to gain access to additional upgrades. So that's kind of the licensing deal with this extension and uh, what it costs and that sort of thing. So I will link to this in the notes down below. Now let's take a look at what this extension is capable of. So this extension has a number of different items that you can add inside your SketchUp models. So everything from light switches to outlets to low voltage outlets, you can add some different light fixtures and things like that as well. So, um, and he's always adding more stuff, but for now these are the things that are available in this extension. The way it works is pretty simple actually. So you start off and you don't have to have any specific wall creation extension. So like for example, let's say I was to model a wall like this one. All you would do is you would just model the wall, and one thing that's going to be important is that you group this wall for this to work, but I'm just going to triple click on this and I'm going to click make group. Well now, let's say I wanted to add a light switch to this wall, I could just go in, I could just click on draw switch, and so you can see how this is live and you can click wherever you want in order to place this object in your model. And so let's take a look at what this did really quick. So what this did is this came in here, this added a switch at a set height and it also added a symbol on the ground. So now if you were to come in here and create a set of plans or something like that, and let's say we went to our view and we turned on parallel projection, you can see how those symbols are now gonna show up in your plan. You can see how this is directly underneath this switch. So because this labels these objects as it goes, you can actually use this to create um, accurate electrical diagrams and things like that. And so let's take a look again at the switch and just look at some of the different options. So there's a few different kinds of options that you can adjust in here. You can adjust the style of your switch. You can also adjust how high above ground this switch goes, as well as the different materials of both the switch and the faceplate. And then the advanced switch options only gives you the option for changing the orientation. So there's not a ton of advanced options in there. And then you can also adjust the number of switches gang together and you can adjust the switch type. So like for example, let's say I wanted this to be a dimmer switch. I would just click down here for dimmer switch and I would click update. And then now if I click on the wall, you can see how this drops a dimmer switch in instead of dropping a normal switch like this one over here. So that's basically the way the functionality works. There's kind of two functions or features, or there's two things going on. There's setting the options and then placing your items inside your model. And so there's a bunch of different options in here for different things. So you can draw like low voltage outlets. So you can see how I can drop this low voltage outlet in here. Um, there's a few different 
things you can adjust there, like the number of ports. So if I wanted this to be four ports, you can see how I can adjust the kinds of ports that go in here. And uh, so that's gonna adjust in here. And uh, these even label like Cat5e based on what this is. And again, you can adjust all the things above ground, stuff like, or you can adjust the height above ground, things like that. So you can also drop in an electrical box. And the electrical box allows you to drop in an electrical box on the wall. So you can add all of these things in on kind of a standard wall. Um, but the other thing this does is this also functions both with uh, Medique wall, which is Medique's wall creation extension, as well as I believe it functions with John Brock's framer extension. But let's say for example, that I was to come in here and create a framed wall. So um, I am going to probably call this wall, we'll say 108 inches high, so nine feet high. And let's go ahead and just drop this wall in here. So I'm gonna drop a wall in here and you can see how this uh, add my framing. Um, that's one of the benefits of using the Medique wall extension. One of the cool things about this is let's say that I was to add an electrical outlet based on this wall. Well, you can see how what this is going to do is this is actually going to let me place this based on my stud location. So, you know, a lot of the time you're going to kind of mount this on a stud. Um, you can see how this will let me do that. So you can also set these where they're just kind of floating in space. Like if you were going to add like a piece of blocking or something like that across here, but you can see how I can actually kind of inference to these uh, different studs. So if you've accurately modeled your studs in here, you could you could really use this to actually um, to actually plan out where you would really place these in real life. So you can see how this interfaces with this extension really well. And so another thing that this uh, extension has to offer is the ability to add light fixtures. And so like for example, let's say I had this wall or this uh, this building that I have in here and we'll go ahead and add a ceiling as well but if you go into the light fixtures section this has a few different options for different kinds of lights that you can add so like for example um, you can set if your fixtures are going to be wall fixtures or ceiling fixtures then you've got a couple different options in here for um, user defined light fixtures and this has a couple built in theoretically this extension also supports dropping these into the library folder of the extension and having more fixtures show up. I didn't really have time to mess around with that function too much, but I think that that's a possibility as well, adding custom fixtures to this list. But like for example, for this one, let's say we wanted a um, light coming off of this wall. Well, what we would do is we would scroll down, we would look at our light fixture, and we would select this wall option. And uh, then we would just take this, you can adjust the rotation of the box, it's gonna go on the wall, as well as the height. And then if I was to click, you can see how this is actually gonna add a light fixture on that wall in this location. So you can use this to add your fixtures and note that when you do this, these fixtures do come in with a symbol down at the bottom. So again, if you're creating plans or something like that, you can use this in order to do that. And so like for example, let's say that we wanted this fixture here to be a wall fixture, but then this other fixture, we could go down to the ceiling option and click update and we could drop this in the middle of our ceiling. And so you'll notice when you drop this in the middle of your ceiling, you do get a symbol placed down below as well. And so note that this does add that fixture symbol down below. And I'm not 100% sure why this isn't getting dropped on the ground level. Um, that's probably something that I didn't change properly. But you can see how that's still in here. And you can definitely come in and take that and move it down so that it lines up with everything else. Um, so there's another fixture type in here, which is more of a hanging fixture, which you can also use. So you can see how I can drop these hanging fixtures in here based on the ceiling location as well. And those also get these symbols down below. And so in addition for uh, safety devices, you've got four built in. So things like uh, exit signs and smoke detectors that you, you can also come in here and add. Um, so like for example, I could drop a smoke detector on the wall right here. And you can also adjust the actual device that's placed in there. Whoops. By picking that from the list, 
and then clicking the update button. And that's one thing to notice when you select a different item in here um, or when you make a change, you need to click the update button before you come click on the actual wall itself. You can see how all of these things are adding symbols on the ground down below. And so there's also a function in here for deleting electrical items. So like for example, if I didn't want these uh, smoke detector boxes that I put in here wrong, you can just click the delete button and then click on those in order to remove those. Um, so parametric functions, meaning being able to come back in and make adjustments to these things are coming soon. They haven't been added to this yet. Um, I believe the idea is you're supposed to be able to come back in in a while and uh, actually make changes to where these things are located. That is not live at the moment. Um, neither is the electrical estimator. That's also a coming soon feature. And so the last thing I wanted to talk about real quick is just a few of the things you can adjust in here because everything is really kind of editable. Um, so like for example, you can adjust if there's like switch labels and other callouts as well. You can adjust what those callouts are. Um, you can also adjust things like what layer all of these items are placed on. Um, you can add custom materials in here. So if you remember before when I had a drop down, these were my options for the different colors. You can add other materials that will then show up in the drop down for things like uh, for things like uh, your switch plates and things like that. So you can adjust the defaults of different items in here as well. So if you want all of your outlets to default to something other than 14 inches, you can change in your global settings. So all of these things, so all of these things are editable and adjustable inside this extension. The estimating is still under construction, but Overall, that gives you a pretty good idea of the way this extension works. Overall, I'm really interested in this. I'm really interested to see where this goes. Um, like I said, I haven't really drawn a lot of uh, plans. My assumption is what you would do is you would take these symbols, and then once you take this into layout, you would probably just draw things like your wiring and stuff like that using the curving lines inside of layout, um, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Any of my electrical people out there, leave a comment below. Let me know how you've been doing that. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this interesting to you? Do you create electrical drawings? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.